Hello, this is Nathan, and welcome back to Dwarf Fortress. Now, if this is the first time you're seeing this, welcome, thank you. Uh, this is a series based on a casual guide to Dwarf Fortress and kind of a let's play of the fortress, the Blockade Born. So, uh, you know, we left off with just embarking here and haven't done much. What I wanted to do was to first pick a site where we're going to either dig down or possibly use a side of the cliff to kind of uh, the entrance to our fortress. Now, um, let's see here. Um, some of the benefits of digging straight down, you know, you immediately start digging and you can start doing dwarfy things pretty beneficial. If you use the side of a hill, you can use its natural formation as a defense, and it kind of gives a limited section of where um, maybe enemies can come in, that kind of thing. You know, you don't feel so surrounded. Um, I think in this case, what we're going to do, we're probably going to go, we're probably going to dig straight down. I actually, in my experience so far, I kind of like digging straight down and then building around it. Um, you know, we can cut a channel through here to create a moat that surrounds our our entrance. Um, it's also, we can dig closer to here, so we do have this natural barrier. Um, trying to think of what other benefits. And it's also just all flat. That way, if I want to build like... Uh, maybe like a little tower for the archers so they can keep track of anybody coming in and out of the fortress, that kind of thing. Um, to be honest, I think I see a lot of people when they're first starting out, they just start doing whatever, which is great. That's the best way to learn. Um, but for me, um, I really want to plan things out ahead of time. And it's kind of sets the fortress up for success, you know, um, some people, you know, if, if you start off, it is spring. You might come to snow, see that everything's frozen, and they dig straight down. And then when it comes to, you know, later spring, early summer, things start melting. And oh no, you have dug straight down in the middle of a river. So it's really good to kind of get your bearings of what your world looks like. So you have an idea of what maybe... Um, hurdles you might have to cross, uh, that kind of thing. You know, where are trees, um, where are the ponds at, that kind of thing. So I actually, I do like where this bend is happening. Um, cause I feel like we might be able to create like another bend in kind of a diagonal for our moat. Um, yeah, I really like it. The only bad thing about having this cut here, uh, for the river going left to right is if, if our ca caravan, and I want to say that this can happen, I think it has, a caravan can show up and they can't cross the river just yet. So you do have to create some kind of bridge to start off. Um, and then that would give access to both sides here. So if you're getting invaded, you know, you're more likely for that to happen if they have that option here. So a lot of different things to think out, think about. I don't want to um, put too much in your mind already. So let's just kind of start off with the beginning here. So right out of the gate, I like to start digging. That's the most important thing. Your doors don't care too much to be out in the open. You know, uh, they're left open to whatever might be out here. And we want to start getting them doing jobs. So, and I said this in the first video, I kind of think that you've already done the tutorial. I highly suggest it. Um, I'm not going to go over exactly what every single thing does. I'm going to have a sense that you know how to dig down. So we're going to pick our stairs here and then we're going to dig. Um, so let's see here. Let's go. Let's go. I think right here. So I like to make a three by three. Most people will do. Um, and I'm going to dig down a few levels here. Um, actually, before that, let me think about something here. Um, I'm actually going to... I'm going to do something. I'm going to dig down once. Yes, I'm going to dig down once. And I'm going to show you guys why. So we got our first layer here. I am going to delete the middle. 
to me, there's not really a necessity to have someone going up and down the middle, and that's just more pathfinding for the doors to find, which could later bog down the system. Nothing really to worry about. Um, but I like to leave this middle place for like leaving a statue or something so that when they are going down the stairs, they can see it and maybe get a, a happy thought. Who knows? Um, so I like it. So we're going to dig down once and then we are actually going to carve out a, um, actually we're going to dig down one more time. We're going to dig down one more time. And we're going to carve out a, uh, kind of like a hallway. So the reason being, and we're going to go right here. Mm, I'm going to do it one more time. One more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason I'm digging down so deep, when I make the moat, I don't want to be interrupted by it because doors don't want to carve into wet tiles, essentially. So we're going to make sure that doesn't happen. So we're going to dig down kind of deep here. Uh, what am I doing? There we go. So we got a straight path down here. And so let's go here. This is the bottom floor for right now. Uh, and we're going to dig a hallway going this way. And it's going to be kind of long. I don't really, for me, I don't really mind if doors have to walk a long ways. Um, it's not really a problem. Um, some people want to make like things as quick as possible so doors get to places. I don't really see that as a problem. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to make a nice long hallway to start things out. And essentially what that is, is going to be um, the entrance if anybody invades us and gets inside the door, uh, the fortress, they're going to have to walk this long hallway to get to it. Um, and I'll show you in a separate video why I'm doing this, but it's a great way to set up like a kill hallway, uh, traps, that kind of thing. And you know exactly um, where invaders are. If you were to just create a three by three here, and start creating, you know, your workshop area and things like that. That means as soon as someone invades, they have access to everything in your fortress. I want them to have access to a very limited area. I want to have control over that. So something to kind of keep in mind. So once they go down here, we're going to have another set of stairs here. And we're actually going to go up and down. So we're going to go up. So we can see here, that is our you know, water area, so to speak. That's So this is the floor that the water is actually at. You know, if we're up here, we're at the surface level, but the water isn't actually here. They fall down into it. So again, we're going to make our three by three. So I'm going to probably, let's see, what do I, what do I want to do? I think we'll keep that all right, so bottom floor, we're going to go one down from here. And then I'm going to start, whoops, what am I doing? What? It, what? Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Jeez. I don't even know what I'm doing sometimes. Okay, so then we're going to go down um, a few levels. That way we can kind of see different layers. And each layer will have its own purpose. And of course, we're going to delete the middle section here. There we go. Okay, so that gives them something to do. Now, before I hit start and then scurry over there, I do want to also get some things ready. So let's cut down some trees here. We do want to keep the trees away from where our do doors are at. The reason being, and if you haven't encountered this in the tutorial, a lot of people have, um, wood cutting doors do not get affected by falling trees, um, but other things do. So if you were to cut this tree and it lands on someone, could kill him, could knock him unconscious. We don't want that to happen. So we're gonna be away from other people and cut down some trees here. We wanna get some wood going because unless you have a mod installed, you can only make beds out of wood. Um, and we wanna make sure we get a place for our dwarves to be. Um, 
and sleeping if necessary because we don't want to make them grouchy so we'll have some cutting there um otherwise we kind of need to wait for this to play out what we can do uh so let's let's have it play out so if we press the space bar we can see that they're going around and digging our woodcutter is getting down to business there And as you can see, they're they're doing a pretty good job here. So we have chestnut, oak, peach wood, peach wood logs. So uh, different, you know, good variety of different wood here. It's not super important, but you can also see what kind of trees they are if you want to keep some of the fruit trees for like foraging later. You know, that's awesome. You know, whatever you want to play as, there's a lot of variety here. We can see that we're digging into sand, specifically yellow sand. Um, if you don't know already, uh, the soil, you know, sand, uh, loam, that kind of thing, clay, it's easier to dig with your miners than rock is. Uh, so some people might see that as a benefit first starting out. You know, your miner has an easier time carving these out, so you might want to create some rooms real quick that way. I'm not super concerned about that since we have two miners and we have enough alcohol and food to kind of get this going. So we're going to let these guys still dig. Saw a cat run right down there before I went up. Um, and they're already uh, exploring the caves here. Uh, we can see a swarm of flies. So a lot of neat little things happening already. Um, just kind of different kind of vermin. You might see, oh, there's a slug here. Um, little guy here, got a louse. A lot of different things already happening. Uh, I think they're attracted to the different animals too. Very interesting, but um, you'll get little notifications, of course, uh, you know, striking different types of rock that might be unique, uh, might have a use. Um, and I highly suggest using the wiki as a ways to figuring out what these things are for. You can always click on it and it'll tell you what they're used for. So uh, lignite is made uh, is to make coke. Um, coke is like coal. You know, it's used for burning, um, but you can also use it to make furniture and buildings. Uh, same thing with this conglomerate, uh, used for furniture and buildings, so they don't really have an extra use there. So, lignite is actually kind of useful. Uh, we don't have to burn trees to um, make coal. Uh, yeah, so uh, there's more. Uh, elves, again, don't like us cutting down trees. If you don't care about else then just cut down as many as you want uh, the more you cut down they might get mad at you and um, invade you so again this is a casual guide we don't really want to piss them off if we don't have to um, I don't mind fighting them if they want to be that picky so one thing I was talking about in my first video why I give my fishing dwarf dodging and wrestling is because of things like this. This is an alligator snapping turtle. If any of my dwarves or animals get close to this guy, he's gonna fight us. He's gonna want to try to attack us, and I don't want that to happen. So we're not gonna be uh, doing anything there, which reminds me, let's go. So if we go into the U thing here, uh, citizen information, let's go to labor, and I want to go to, now we're gonna say don't show again, this is where you can tell the game what each dwarf does. Uh, if you're used to uh, RimWorld or something like that, it's kind of similar to the priority system, but instead of giving them a priority, you just say whether or not they do this. Um, everybody does this. You can see if they have a skill in it, you know, novice fish dwarf. So I'm actually gonna tell them, do not fish right now. I don't want you fishing because uh, we're just starting out. I don't want you to get in trouble right away. Same thing with hunting. I don't need you to hunt right now. We have food. We have uh, drinks. We don't need any of that right now. We'll, we'll open that back up when we need to. So our miners are done. So let's set a couple things up. So um, one thing to consider, again, a lot of information, but this is a casual guide and I want you guys to think about this, is these uh, soil walls, sand, loam, you cannot smooth them. At least I don't think you can. No, you cannot smooth them. Smoothing is important to give dwarves happy feelings and it's also to increase 
the value of the place. Um, you know, dwarves like it when they have a nice room. So being able to smooth rock does that for you. Uh, so I like to build most of my stuff down into this rocky layer. I don't like building in this soil area. The only soil I like building, or the only things I like building in the soil are like farms and stuff, which you will see. So, so let's do that. Um, I want to, let's do this. So we are going to build. So if we, so right now we're on our kind of surface layer where the invaders go at, right? So we're going to go down once, twice into this rocky layer, and I am going to build um, a dormitory. So let's do that. I like to make my hallways three wide. Um, some people like doing one, which is actually kind of bad. Don't do that. Um, doors you'd think are getting around just fine, but once you get more doors and more entities in your map, things start to slow down and you'll notice that doors walk slower. You might not notice it, but they do walk slower if you do a one by one. It's because if a dwarf passes by another dwarf, one actually gets down on their knees and walks under or the other dwarf walks over them. So that takes an extra step that you don't need if you give them enough space. So I like to do three by three. Uh, that way it also matches up with the stairs down below. Uh, so let's do a bit of a hallway, give us some room here. And then we'll create a room. Let's oh, get a little hasty there. We're gonna create a little room. They don't need much, especially if it's a dormitory. Um, <clears throat> so that way they have a place to sleep for now. You know, they don't have their own room, uh, but they do have somewhere to sleep. Speaking of which, we did cut down that wood here. So let's do a workshop. So if we go into, show that again, building, workshop, and go to our carpenter, you know, the person who works the wood, uh, we wanna make some beds. So let's do it close to the fortress. Uh, that way we're not going over there next to the snapping turtle. And something to consider, um, right now the option is select material after placement. So if I were to hit this, it lets me pick what this thing is made out of. Generally, not too important. Um, you can always make it higher quality, depending on what you're making it out of. Um, some things need certain rocks that are magma safe, so that way they don't get caught on fire. Um, Cause fires do happen. You know, if you have a dragon or something like that, things are flammable, especially if they're made out of wood and you don't want your whole fortress to catch on fire. Um, definitely not really something we need to worry about. So I'm just gonna pick what's closest by. So you can see this is 13 spaces away and we're gonna click on it. So someone's gonna start that and let's see how our doors are doing down here. So the flashing bits is of course uh, what our job or what their next job is going to be. You can see that someone actively knows that uh, this is a thing that's gonna happen and they're gonna go and mine it next. So great, they're doing that. Let's go back up to our whoop, fortress here. If you click F1, it goes to your embark location where your caravan is. So I like to do that, makes it easy. So we have our carpenter's workshop. So I wanna make some beds. Um, you do not need to make a bed for each dwarf. Uh, they do not all sleep at the same time. So I'm actually just gonna make four and then someone's gonna come over here, grab some wood and start making beds. So it looks like it's this guy. We click on him. Um, we can see what action he's doing, making bed. Uh, I want to go over this later, you know, all these different tabs. Um, it's just not important right now. It really isn't. We just want to get our foot in the ground. Uh, oops, in terms of, what am I doing? That's weird. Oh, do I have caps lock on? Okay. Yes, if you have caps lock on and go up a space, it goes by 10, I believe. Um, especially, also if you hold shift, it goes up and down that much. Um, I think I have my hotkeys set, so it's not working. There we go. So something to keep in mind, 
I generally don't mean to do that. So um, if you see yourself doing that, it's probably because you have caps lock on. Okay, so let's go see what's happening here. So we got our little room here. Oh, we should have made a door. Um, I'm going to do two things here. So let's get this going. So we are going to make a... Um, I generally like to make furniture out of stone. There's a lot more stone. I don't like pissing off the, the L's right away. Um, so if we can make it out of stone, we will. So stone worker, we'll just make it right next to the workshop here. And we'll make it out of the peach wood. So while that's going on, I still have it on pause. I do want to figure out what I'm doing with these other levels. So for me, the next level generally is a farming level. So um, I like to make, uh, so let's do this. So we're just going to carve out like a little area um, around it. We're going to carve out the middle. You know, we don't use that as stairs. And um, that way they just kind of have a place to kind of uh, walk around. It's I like the aesthetics of it. So let's um, let's start out with building a farm area. So let's see here. So we want uh, what we want to keep in mind. We need stockpiles for the different um, things we're going to be doing: brewing, butchering, tanning, all that good stuff. So let's make a little room for that. So we're going to make like a hallway here. I think people consider this kind of the rib structure of building a fortress where you kind of have this main point and you shoot off from it. And it's, I think that's what they call it, a rib. Um, I think it's really easy as a starting off fortress to do it this way, but feel free to whatever makes sense for you. I like seeing it as different levels have different uses. So this level will be exclusive for farming. Uh, so let's see here so what we're gonna do so we have our hallway here i'm gonna make two by two doors uh to get in and out doors have to be next to a wall you cannot have a door in the middle um, they need something to be kind of hooked on to here and then every single workshop at least most of them are three by three so let's kind of keep that in considered here um, when we're building this so i like to come out with like a rough shape of how much we're going to be digging out and then we'll just kind of subtract or add as we see fit. So if we were to go into our workshop and farming, this is going to be our farming level. There's a lot of different things. So we have a butcher, a tanner, a fishery, a kitchen, a farmer. Um, I think those are all the right out of the gate. You want, want basically all of these. Um, so uh, let's let's see how many there are. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six different three by threes that we need to consider. Um, so let's see here. So if we were to do that, uh, one, two, let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three, two. Yeah, that gives us enough space here. So let's do that. So this is gonna be our general shape. Um, Let's see something. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, that gives us some space to kind of play around here. I'm gonna actually do a little bit more. Okay, so that's odd. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, 16. Yeah, so this is even an odd, some people like being picky with symmetry or even uh, keeping everything kind of kosher. Whatever suits your bill. Um, one thing I wish that the game had was like a visual of how many dots you're doing. In the classic version it does, so hopefully they'll add that in a later update. So I kind of want to have an, uh, a section here for our workshops and a stockpiles for them. Um, so that, let's do that. So we're actually gonna do something here. Let's give us one more. And I'm actually going to do, we're gonna do this. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So let's do this.
Oh, let's do... So what I'm doing... Is I'm going to create an area. This is going to be our stockpile of brew. And a stockpile of prepared meals. This is going to be where our workshops are. Uh, down here. The reason I'm creating these walls... Here, let's do this. Oh, stop it. Let's do this. The reason I'm creating these spaces is these are going to have doors. I don't want vermin to come through and try to eat our stuff. From my experience, when I'm doing it this way, we never really have to worry about it. I, I don't get anybody attacking it. The cats do a good job and the... Uh, the doors and stuff. Um, and plus it's kind of aesthetically pleasing, you know, having separate rooms here. And then down here, what we're going to do is we're going to have a stockpile for our food. I'm actually not going to create doors for it, but this is going to be where, uh, just unprepared food is and a refuse pile. Um, yeah, let's do one more. There we go. So we'll, we'll have like a little walkway here where the dwarves can go, you know, to the workshop, to the stockpile. And then over here, we're gonna actually create a, this is where our actual farms are gonna be. Now, in RimWorld, you need pretty big farms to kind of feed your colony. Um, in Dwarf Fortress, you really don't need too much. Um, yeah, you generally don't need too much. I think there's only, what, five types of seeds? I don't remember. Maybe there's like seven. Here they are. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six? Six different types? We'll go with that. Um, we have di six different types of seeds to plant. Um, one thing, since we're talking about it, I want to show you guys. So if we go to Labor Kitchen, we can tell the, the dwarves what to use for certain ingredients. I wish there was an easier way of doing this, uh, but this is what we have. So if we look over here, you can see that these plump helmets are used for cooking and also making into alcohol. I like to leave these exclusively for alcohol. Um, and then the seeds are already are saying that they cannot be brewed and also they're restricted from cooking. You can cook your seeds. Um, the game already defaults it, so you don't have to. Um, do not cook these seeds. You need the seeds. If you cook them, um, you do not get them back. Uh, drink, you can say if you want to use it for cooking or not. I like to do in the beginning, use it exclusively for uh, brewing or, you know, drinking. And then, of course, here we have our meat. Um, all of this is good for cooking. I don't really see anything that needs to be taken off. So we're looking good here. So something to keep in mind, guys. All right, let's go back here. So if we're going to have, I know of six seeds at least. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a, I, we don't need to get very big. I actually think we just need to get to like five spots. So I'll show you one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so we're gonna do six of these, so five by five. Okay, and then we'll go all the way down here, and then down here is gonna be our stockpile for the different seeds. Now that seems kind of big for the seeds stockpile if you've already done the tutorial, but I'm gonna show you why I'm doing it that way. So we're gonna let them go to work there. Um, let's go back to the surface, see what's going on here. So let's create our, our uh, stone workers area. And then we wanna make a door. So we're just gonna say make rock door. And then as we can see here, they've already made the four beds. So let's go back to our dormitory and let's build those beds in there. So if we go to build, furniture, bed, um, what I like doing, at least in the beginning, I'm not too picky what kind of furniture I put in here. Some people might want to use higher quality furniture in like a noble's bedroom for the dormitory and starting out, it does not matter. So use, use closest material, um, which means that it will just select whatever's closest by. And if we do check mark, keep building after placement, we can keep building after we've placed something down. Um, and there we go. We've got our four beds. 
We're, we're telling the dwarves to build there. If there's something in the way like rock, they will pick it up, move it, and then build it. And we can see here they're already getting pretty, uh, you know, they've got a good chunk of the farming section here. And then let's see, did we get our door? Nope, they're probably bringing the rock already. If you have a green check mark next to your order, that means someone is currently doing it and able to do so. All right. So we're getting that done. All right, so we got the four beds, great. So what we wanna do is designate this area as a dormitory. So as you can see here, um, I went down to Z for zones and there are different things to build. We are gonna do a dormitory. So it gives a little explanation. It's basically just a place with multiple beds and anybody can sleep here um, in our civilization. So what we're gonna do is paint this area. You always wanna include the walls too, not just this little, uh, the floor area. You wanna include the walls and hit accept. And then you'll see here that there's a dormitory here. So we'll do, um, well, let's call it dormitory. Nothing too fancy. Yeah, there we go. So now the dwarves will use this area to sleep when they need to. They generally don't like it as much as their own bedroom, but it's good to have this down. So let's go back to our top layer here. We can see that they made a door. So let's go back down. And then we are gonna build a door here. Again, if we use closest material, it'll just pick the door that we already have, right click to get out of it, and now we're telling them to do that. I like just to have doors. Um, I don't know if they're super important to have, but it is a good way of creating little spaces that you may need to lock down. So if you click on a door, you can see that we can either make it forbidden or passable. If it's forbidden, nobody can walk through it. Nobody, not even enemies. If we don't have that as um, forbidden, anybody can walk through it. All right, so they're still digging out this area. Um, let's see here. Let's see if we can kind of start creating some of these things. So let's do this. Again, a lot of this decision making that I'm doing is for aesthetic reasons. Um, there might not be an actual use to do it. It's just the way I like doing it. So. First thing that we need to be doing is creating a still, very important, dwarves in their alcohol. Um, we gotta get this down pat. So I like to make, let's see, how many spaces do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, cool. So what we're gonna do is we'll make this top layer here based on what are we doing? Workshop. So we got our still. Let's get our, um, we'll do a farming up here. And we will also do what else? What else could we do here? Kitchen? Let's do kitchen. Now, Dwarves can, they walk through workshops and stuff. You don't need to worry about blocking it, that kind of thing. They're able to walk through this because um, they they actually can go diagonal. Um, but the workshop themselves do not block. So we got that. Um, now let's make, so what, we got to do the other thing. So let's do a butcher. So let's see how many spaces we got here. We got a lot. So let's do a little space in between it. So we got our butcher, let's do our tanner. We'll do it over here. And then of course, the fishery I think is one of the last things here. So let's do it over here. Oh, we can't, we can't. So we got like a little area here. Um, they'll build it. These Some of these aren't used until we like find animals to hunt, um, but I like to have them down uh, so that when we do need them, we already have them. And they're really, workshops are super easy to make. You know, they don't require much. All right. So we're waiting for that to be done. The farming area is almost done as well. Cool. 
So let's do the farming. Um, da, 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 da. Workshop farming and then a farm plot. So use closest material and stuff is not important. You cannot choose what material you make these farm plots out of because it's the ground below it. Um, but keep building after placement lets us keep building farm plots after we make them. So when you make a farm plot, whatever you pick is going to be the entire farm plot. And I'll show you what I mean. So if we click on it, we made one. So let's click on it. It's waiting for the construction. Let's make it real quick so I can show you guys what it entails. Um, before we fill up this entire thing. So we got our farmer here. They're going to make this. There we go. Okay. So let's pause it. So as we can see, it's spring now, and we can only do certain things in spring, in summer, autumn, and winter. So for me, I like knowing how many different seeds there are, variety. There's only like a handful, and making a farm plot exclusive for each one. That seems to do a good enough job. So let's see. So we have four different things here. Um, you know, dimple cups, plump, quarry, bushes, and sweet pods. And then we have cave wheat and pigtails. Um, I think that's six so far. And I don't think there's anything else. Right, so I was right. There's only six things. So for example, for this one, I'm just going to make it so it's all plump helmets. The reason I do this is so I know what I have. You know, you can always name these. So we could say this is a uh, plump uh, farm, you know, whatever. Um, that way we just know. And then we can also click, uh, set to, uh, fertilize, fertilize every season. It says that this is poor soil. Cavern soil is best. So down below in the deep dark, there's a cavern layer, which is like a natural cave. And that kind of soil is better for growing in rather than the surface soil, <clears throat> so to speak. These things that we're growing can only be grown underground. If we go up into the surface level, we can grow normal things like, you know, like these red beans, cabbage, uh, things like that. Generally, I don't like keeping my dwarves up on the surface. They don't need to be up there. Um, they can get everything off of their own farm plots. So let's make the other ones. Um, ch -ch 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 workshop. So we'll make a line, click. So that makes one, make another one, and so forth. So forth. So that way we're exclusively uh, making one for each one. Of course, if you don't like that, feel free to make a variety because not everything is available in each uh, season. So for an example, sweet pods, they're not available in autumn nor winter. So you might want to have something there um, in the meantime. For me, I like knowing what I have um, and kind of controlling it more. So I keep everything exclusive. So we have our plump farm. You can already see that they've grown some things here. So let's go to our next one. We'll call this dimple farm. So we'll do all dimple cups. Cool. We'll go to the next one. We'll do this quarry bushes, quarry farm. Now, did I? Let's see. Pigtails. Yeah. Quarry. There we go. Now, I, I kind of wish they had a different visual. So if you mouse over it, another good reason to name it, you can see what I'm... You know, I haven't done this one yet. Farm plot. So let's do sweet pods. Yep. We'll call it sweet farm. And then we have, let's see here, uh, pigtail. Okay. And then our last one, I think, is cave wheat. There we go. Okay. So we have that set. So everything's good to go. Um, when we get a bigger population, we'll want to extend it. So I will either, you know, make another six by 
uh, five here or just kind of extend it this way. Um, if you make it too big, you just get too much uh, and it's not needed. It's all about just doing enough in the beginning so that way dwarves aren't occupied too much and not doing enough in your uh, fortress in the beginning. So let's go over stockpiles. I am again going to be very specific with these stockpiles. If we make one, uh, we can just say, you know, all, you know, all food goes here. I don't want to do that. I want to know what's in my fortress. Uh, it makes it easier to organize. You know where things are. If you're like, am I low on something? You know exactly where it is and your doors. Um, you can kind of control where your doors put things. So for this one, I believe this was the, uh, what is this? Plump farm. So we're going to do plump seats. All right. So we're going to go to uh, custom here. I just know that seeds are under food. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit the none. And we're going to go down to seeds. And we're going to say um, just plump. So we'll look to plump helmet spawn. So that way, the only thing that they can put in here are these seeds for the plump helmets. Um, again, certain things are called certain things like helmet spawn. You may not know. You might have typed in seeds because there are actual seeds here. Uh, but the game is pretty realistic, or at least tries to be. So, you know, mushrooms don't have seeds. They have spawn, spores, that kind of thing. So if you have trouble finding something, you might have to go in the wiki and see what other forms they are. So once that's done, right click. And the last thing as a tip for seeds, they naturally, when you select what is in here, they're going to select a container that they keep themselves in. For whatever reason, if seeds are kept in barrels, they're also kept in bags. They're, so they go seeds, bags, and barrels. If there are barrels, for some reason, doors won't use the barrels. It's very strange. There's a weird bug where they won't utilize the barrels to like store seeds and stuff. So you'll just have a bunch of seeds laying around. So what I like to do is say no barrels. So what we'll see here are bags of seeds for our plump spawn. So there we go. Um, so what I'm going to do is make one for each one here. So this was dimple, I think. Dimple seats. Let's make sure. Yep. Then we're going to do the same thing. Go to food, seeds, and type in dimple. There we go. And then, of course, get rid of the barrels. I wish there was a copy and paste function. Um, there just isn't. At least that, that I know of. The best you can do is make a macro, um, which I might show in a later video. But for now, it's very just um, just like this, you know, lots of clicking. Oh, let's see what it is. Quarry farm. OK. Uh, seeds. Ooh, what are the quarry bush ones called? Uh, let's go back. Rock nuts. That's what they're called. See? Entirely different name here. So we'll do quarry seeds. We'll go to food. Uh, la, 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 la. There we go. Rock nuts. There we go. Perfect. All right. Sweet pods. Pigtail. Um, what am I doing? There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Got to get rid of the barrels.
And then the last one, um, what is it? Cave wheat. Okay. There we go. So our our doors here should be transporting the seeds over here. And of course, farming as they see fit, if something is applicable. Yep, dimple cup, there we go. Um, let's do something here. So labor, we're gonna go to our uh, planters and I just want, oh, I guess I don't really have a, tan, a, a specific person for planting. I don't know if like the more skilled they are, if it's faster or they're able to plant more, but the um, plant gatherers, you do want your herbalist to gather specifically. Uh, they can gather more when that happens. So uh, they're doing their own thing there. Um, we got our dormitory. So we're looking pretty good. Um, all right, so let's set this up and then that way we're ready uh, to kind of kind of send off this episode here. So let's make a stockpile. Um, how many, how many sizes are these or squares? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So what I'm gonna do is make a stockpile. So it's gonna be six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This one is going to be our prepared meals. Um, actually, I take that back. It's going to be our drinks. I'm just going to call it drink. Actually, let's call it um, um, stock drinks. This is where we're going to be our over overflow of drinks. You know, normally you want your drinks in a tavern, a meeting area, that kind of thing. So this is going to be where um, our guys just give the uh, the drinks to. Uh, we don't want them to, you know, navigate all the way down to the taverns to deliver it. Uh, we just want them to be able to, you know, quickly go back and forth here. So let's go to custom. And I think this one's pretty straightforward. If we just go to drink, um, you can see that all the different drinks that are able to be made. So we'll do all there. Um, the only animal stuff is mead. So we'll do that. And then I think that's actually it. There's like milk and light and stuff like that, but that's not what we're here for. We're for alcohol drinks. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So we're, we're good there. So we'll get out of here. Um, perfect. Yes. So we'll do that. And then what we want is another stockpile. These are probably really big right now. I just like doing it um, as kind of starting off. Uh, one thing I usually, well, sometimes you'll probably have to make this bigger, so we might have to move this up, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So we'll call this prepared meals stock. And what we want to do is go to food and just check mark prepared meals and that's it so when our cook makes a meal this is where they store it uh, doors want to eat prepared meals they don't need to eat uh just prepared meat uh you know things off the ground that kind of thing they get better thoughts when they're eating meals um, so that's where we're going to store it at so if we already have wine stuff they should be getting ready to deliver it um, one of the last areas that we want to do here are two different stockpiles. Um, I may not make one of these correctly to begin with, but it's kind of trial and error. So what I'm going to do, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll do four here. And this one is going to be where our food is that we need to prepare. So food, uh, uh, trying to think we'll call we'll say raw food uh because it's not prepared uh let's do here we're going to go to food and i think we're going to hit all here we're going to say no prepared meals uh and no drink whoops let's try that again 
drink. So we'll go over here. And that way, everything else is going to be here. Uh, seeds, we don't need seeds. We already have a section for that. Don't need to confuse our doors. But everything else for now is going to be stored here. We might change this as we make different workshops. But for now, this should be all we need. So that's going to happen. Um, let's make our other stockpile. Now this one's a little bit trickier. Oh, yeah, four by four. This is going to be our refuse. Uh, stock. Now this one's a bit tricky. So this is where things go, where they rot or... Um, what am I looking for here? Refuse. This is where things rot, uh, maybe degraded, things that aren't used. But another thing that they're used for are bones and things like that. Uh, so for now, since we don't have a workshop area, we're going to keep skulls, bones, shells, teeth, horns and hooves, hair and wool. Um, we're not going to keep body parts. I don't think we're going to keep corpses. No. Corpses. Hmm. Well, maybe we do keep corpses. I'm trying to think here. I'm trying to remember. Because essentially what I'm thinking. So anytime your cat um, kills a vermin. Uh, they are stored here, which they don't need to be. You can't use that vermin for anything. They don't stink or anything. They don't create mi miasma. Um, if you have a rotting meat, it creates miasma, and that's poisonous air for your dwarves. Um, and it will fill up the space. It's like a gas, um, which we make, make a vent for, uh, for this pile here. Um, but I'm trying to remember... Here, let's see if we can find something. Animal, small, vermin, no. I forget what they consider it. Small live animals. That's what it is. Um, we're going to leave that off here. So we don't want them to come here. Um, if we see that vermin are being transported here, I'll have to just adjust here. Um... But it's different from corpses here. So corpses as a stockpile is like for uh, animals or people that have, and, I, and I'm sorry, I don't know the right word, but it's like smart animals, you know, things that can think, um, that kind of thing, you know, raven men, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, that's where corpses of that like go. Refuse is just for like animals that have to be butchered, degrading things, uh, that kind of thing. So for right now, at least until I see my doors moving stuff around, that may not be good. Uh, that's what we're going to keep here. I still don't like the corpses, but we're, we're just going to go for now. Um, so that should be good for that. Um, as you can see here, we already have our seeds being left in the bags. And that way it's just a nice little area for them to grab things at. Um, but they should be start moving, uh, the food, um, the drinks. It's just, we have a lot of jobs for them to do. So everybody's kind of doing their own thing. For some reason, Mr. Carpenter here is sleeping out in the open, even though I do have a dormitory for them to use. Um, must be just super tired. But as we can see here, our rat meat is being transported into these areas. If they are stored in a stockpile and in a barrel, they will not rot. Uh, we won't get miasma um, and we won't have to worry about it. So everything's pretty much coming along here. Um, I think in our next video, what we're going to do, I'm going to pause it here. Um, in our next video, we're going to focus on creating the workshop area, which is very important and certain things to kind of keep in mind um, when creating your workshop area. Because if you do no door fortress, your doors will get into a certain mood that makes it so that 
They want to create an artifact. And if they don't get the required materials, they will go berserk. So I have a way of setting up the workshops so that if I don't have the materials for them, we can close them in in the workshop and they can die that way. You know, they're this they're basic, there's nothing to cure them once they do that. Um, and I don't want them throwing tantrum, killing other dwarves, causing chaos, that kind of thing. So I'll show you guys how I set that up. I also have a good way of setting up materials that are made, um, you know, a stockpile for them to use. So that way it's all kind of built around this uh, craft levels. It's really cool. I like the way that I do it. Um, if you guys have any tips on how to do it, feel free to let me know. Um, in this kind of farm area, it is kind of haphazard. I'm not really too happy with it, but if we do need to build like another still, we have room to do so. Um, another thing that we can build in the farm, which we will later to do, and I did see, is a, uh, where is it? Is it not here? Da 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 da. It's not a quern, is it? No. Hmm. What is it called? Anyway, it's used for honey. Um, I don't think it's a quern, is it? No. What is that thing called? Now I'm going to be... I want to know what this thing is. Is it a machine? Maybe it is a quern. I'm just going crazy. Let's see. No. Stoneworker. Screw press? Yeah, screw press. That's what it is. So the screw press lets it, it can press the honeycombs into honey, which I like storing here because then we make meat out of it. Um, if I actually did see a a beehive there it is here's a beehive colony of honeybees so we will definitely scoop them up put them in a, a hive box that way we can start getting honey and i'll show you guys how to do that too um but they have to be outside in order to work so i think our uh colony here the blockade born is looking pretty good um a really good start here and uh, i'm looking forward to the next episode where I'm going to go over the section where I'm creating the craft area and then we'll just kind of play it by ear. Again, if you guys have any questions, leave it down in the comments below. Uh, I want to make sure I answer them. Anything you might want me to go over again or touch on, I can make small little videos about that. Uh, but so far, this has just kind of been a fun series and I'm looking forward to what happens to our little... Uh, uh, fortress here. So thank you so much for watching. Of course, leave a like if you haven't. Uh, if you like the video, you can also dislike it. You know, if it's not something up your alley, you know, leave a comment below. If you have any criticism, anything I said wrong, uh, there's a lot to this game and I want to make sure I'm telling you guys the right thing. So please feel free to correct me and, um, you know, any questions you might have too. And of course, if you haven't already, Feel free to subscribe to our channel. Let's us know that you like seeing what you're seeing. Um, gives us motivation to keep going. And I just really appreciate it. I really do. This is really fun to do. And I hope I can keep doing it for you guys. So thank you so much again. Um, as always, this is Nathan. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I will see you.